right guys, it's our favorite time of the week. As usual, another 15 minutes on Friday morning where we don't need to do anything but sit back, relax, and listen to the news. I'm Kayla Wirchniak. And I'm Ryan Welch. Today we have some stories including the new school garden, 10 minute plays, and a story that'll take you back in time. But before we start the show, we would like to take a moment to honor Brentwood Police Officer Stephen Arkell, who was shot and killed Monday evening after answering a domestic violence call in Brentwood, New Hampshire. His presence resonated through the community as a friend, father of two, and the cross coach at Exeter High School. Our thoughts and prayers are to him, his family, and the Blue Hawk community. For the first story of the day, Henri Coleman and I looked into the new school garden that's being built in the back of the school. Winnicunna is a school full of upcoming projects and innovative ideas. Many of these ideas revolve around healthy food and teaching sustainability to students. Recently, the Life After Winnicunna class has been planting gardens to help in these efforts and better benefit the community. We asked Mrs. Cumming, the teacher of Life After Winnicunna and several food classes, where the idea originated and what has been done to make it possible. Okay, the building idea um, came from a combination of folks. Many years ago, the Worry Kitchen Kids started doing plants in the classroom just to show how you grew food from seed and then brought it to the table. However, this year what happened was the facilities director and the CAF person, the head of the CAF, got together and evidently they decided to try and do a garden as well. And basically with the new addition of the salad bar, they decided that they would try and grow some of their own vegetables to put on the salad bar. The students had already started growing their vegetables, so Cummings and her Life After Winnicunit class stepped up to help build the garden. Several other classes were involved, including a summer program to help weed and take care of the garden during the summer. But who exactly is the garden benefiting? My students will have access to some of the vegetables as well as the cafeteria. Um, but we do do a number of things with the community food pantries. And so I think that as far as the foods and nutrition classes go, we certainly will be able to use some of the supplies in helping feed those folks. Um, and certainly the more natural and unprocessed the foods are, the better they are for people. This program has been started with the intent to help the community as well as educate the students. 12.5 million children and adolescents in the U.S. are obese, with New Hampshire ranging in the 23 to 27 percent of the population category, according to the CDC. With growing vegetables in schools, the intent is to help reduce this epidemic, as well as give children the life skills that go with cultivating gardens. So far, students have reported enthusiasm and an improved teamwork as a result of this project. Um, I'm really excited about this because I think it's going to help the school and the community a lot. I'm, I'm excited about the garden. I think it's a really good idea. I'm excited to uh, reap, reap the uh, benefits of our garden. I love the idea. It's going to help uh, the community and it's going to help us learn when we get out of high school. Everybody was very excited about it and, and um, it showed a good team effort and some real life skills. So the kids have been using math and nutrition and, and they've been using a lot of skills that you get from all of your classes and applying them to the project. The garden is home to many plants, including pizza pots, or pots containing the vegetables and spices you could put in pizzas, such as oregano, tomatoes, basil, chives, and peppers. The hope is that the project will benefit classes to come and better when it kind of in the community. However, there still remains a great need for more sponsors. Good story, Kayla. Thanks, Ryan. Coming from a cinematographer like yourself, that means a lot. I mean, the camera work could have been improved, editing was par, and I think you could have found a better shirt to do the intro in. But besides that, the story was fine. That's good enough coming from a dingus like yourself. But hey, have you ever thought about what it would be like to have grown up in a different time period? What do you mean, Kayla? Like both of us were born in the 90s and grew up in the 21st century, but what would it have been like to have grown up in a different generation? Well, we'll never know that, Kayla. We can imagine. Alec and Chrissy went around the school to see what time period students wished they had grown up in. In a world where Chrissy Conklin and Alec Boucher attend a high school with nearly 1,200 students. Not all of us enjoy growing up in the 21st century. Although the 21st century has introduced many opportunities and new technology, some of us still wish we grew up in a separate time. Each decade brings to us a new stream of trends. In the 1800s, we had cowboys and Native Americans. 
In the 60s, we had hippies who rode around in their VW vans. Also the 80s, where chewing bubble gum, blowing big bubbles, and wearing freaky neon clothes was hip. Alec and I went around and asked your classmates which decade they would have liked to grow up in. Check it out, Winnicunn it. Probably would have uh, liked to grown up around the 1930s because it would have taught me discipline. Uh, I'd like to live in the uh, 1700s and live that Amish life. Um, I'd like to live in the 1920s because there's a, lo there's a lot of parties right before the Great Depression. I would like to grow up in the 60s because you could do whatever you want and not really get in trouble. <laughs> 1860s because I want to be a cowboy. Yeehaw! <laughs> All right, probably uh, late 60s, early 70s. There's a lot of change during that time. And it's just a cool time period. Uh, I'd grow up in the future, so that way, you know, I'd live forever. Like, they'd have crazy advances in science, and I'd live forever. I would go through uh, the 40s due to the fact uh, a lot happened in the 40s. 90s for Biggie and Pac. Uh, I'd say before Christ, so I could uh, be the next Jesus. I'd like to grow up or be in the 80s so I could like meet Arnie in his prime. I would have grew up in the 1800s. I grew up in a time period in the 1900s. Throw the other ones, because men were men and women were women. There's no in between. Um, the 60s and 70s, but I wanted to be like old enough so I could go to a Beatles concert and see them live before Yoko ruined it. I would like to have grown up in the far future where women have complete ownership of their bodies and no old men would be arguing over abortion. We would want to live in the 1940s because the men were classy and good looking and because of Frank Sinatra. From before Christ, the future, your classmates have shared with you what decade they truly want to grow up in. For WHTV, Alec Boucher and Chrissy Conklin, time traveling out. What even is time? I don't feel like going into it, that conversation right now. Come on. Please? Fine. Okay, we can discuss it uh, off air. Okay, well, while we discuss time, Tyler Johnson and Cam Slack bring us a story on some 10-minute plays ITS put on a couple weeks ago. Recently, 10-minute plays was the last performance seniors made. It was an emotional event, considering it was the last memory they will have with each other. Let's hear their thoughts on seniors leaving. I'm about to go on the stage in 15 minutes. Um, I'm a little nervous. Um, it's getting, it's gonna get pretty sentimental out there because it's the last time that I get to share the stage with like my favorite people ever. This is my last, last, last Winnicott kind of performance and um, I love the 10 minute plays. They're one of my favorite things. They're one of the most fun things because they're all student directed and acted and produced and everything and um, woo, about to go on stage. Really can't be talking about this. Um, <laughs> We're all going on to bigger places but it's still kind of hard to say goodbye. Um, I've been in all the 10-minute plays here for my time and they've really just like welcomed me and make me feel really at home. So my goal for this year was just try to do that for the freshmen and I know that we're leaving this group in good hands. What is special about these 10-minute plays is that they were all student directed and written. I directed uh, airline 13 I directed airline 13 I wrote the okay kids and I wrote the editors um, and I will be acting in clean sweep let's see what the audience thinks about this year's last performance how do you like this play uh, yeah I like it a lot all the acting was really great and uh, it was really well written I love it Yes, I do love it. I really like this show. Uh, it's going pretty good. Uh, no problems up here, at least. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Despite the emotional toll, with this being the seniors' last show, it was well put together and achieved a lot of great reviews. Think about it. Time moves continuous, but it's all perception. Okay, I'm done talking about it. Yeah, I have a headache. Is that we all we have for today? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm hungry. If you don't buy one kind of apparel, you get confused.
When you get confused, you walk outside to get air. When you walk outside to get air, you get snatched up by a blue hawk. When you get snatched up by a blue hawk, the blue hawk brings you to its nest. When the blue hawk brings you to its nest, you become a blue hawk. Don't become a blue hawk. Buy one account at apparel at Warrior Trading Post. Any customer who spends $5 or more gets a free lanyard. So visit the Warrior Trading Post today.